In our previous video, we showed how we could take a MicroLogix 1100 or 1400 and control it in our PowerFlex 525 drive. Now, I left you kind of on a cliffhanger on, on the last one because we can do some really cool things in addition to that that I wanted to break out into a separate video. And that is the data links that we can use to exchange certain custom information to and from the PLC. Now, yours are already set up if you purchased our trainer, but let's talk through what they are. So this is the program that we left with in the previous video. And yeah, you actually probably could get away without looking at that, but you probably want to. But also, we were over here in our PowerFlex 525 and connected components. And just to show how we would do that, I'm going to go File Close. And I'm going to go File Discover. And we're going to go find our PLC. And if you're using one of our trainers, the default IP is 192.168.1.12. Mine's at 20.12. I'm going to click OK. That's going to pull the parameters out of it. And we're going to go down to 150 sub. You already have some custom parameter data set in yours. So we have 360. That is actually going to get the analog input off of the PowerFlex 525. Then we have C158 set to 3. That is going to let you know the current that the power that the, your motor is pulling. 159 is at 4. That is your voltage output to your motor. And then 160 is set to 5, and that is your DC bus voltage. Now, just to kind of help you grasp what you're looking at there, is that is the same parameters that we can get to on the front of our drive. So if I go and hit the escape key and then select B3, that is the current amps the motor is running. B4. That's the current volts the motor is running. We're not running right now, so it doesn't show anything. But I put B5 on those parameters just so you can see. Right now, we have live data there, 343 volt. And then if we go up to the D parameters, D360, that is the voltage that is currently coming on the analog value. Now, we pop our cover off here. I have taken our SIM ALP2. And I have connected the black, black post to terminal 14. That is our analog common. And I've connected the red post to terminal 13. That is our analog input. So if I power our analog simulator up and I turn it into voltage source, then as I bring this up, we're getting a value on our PowerFlex 525 and a 10 volt. We're showing. 99.8 there is depends on how you have this scaled right now i have it scaled for percent so we can take that value and using the data link pass it over to our plc which is a really cool feature so we're just going to pick up in the last program that we were working on and we're going to add a few rungs to it so i'm going to go ahead and just go offline for these And then we are going to continue just cascading these timers. So right now we had that sample rate that fires our right logic message to our PowerFlex 525. And when it's done, we do the read message. So now we're going to bring down another instruction or wrong. And we're going to go look for a one. And in this case, we're just going to tie that next message on so this will be mg9 colon 2 dot dn so when this message is done it's going to fire the next message we're going to the input output category bring a message instruction down and then we're going to get mg9 in this case it will be three and i'm going to call this my read data Later. So for this one, we will use the channel one again, but this, instead of using the 500 read and write, we're going to use a SIP generic message 
And we need to know our next available point. Now, actually, let me spend a moment on this because this can get really confusing. If we open up N7 and we hit the usage, you see it looks like 5 and 6 are not being used, but we know they are. In the previous video, we found out 6 is our current speed in hertz. Now, this message right here was doing a read, and it was putting it in 7, 4, but it was a length of 3, so that's 4 five and six so our next available one is going to be seven so we'll open this back up and we're going to put this in in seven colon seven and then down here now this is a little different notice here we don't have the ri file that we had over here such as ri 10 colon two this one right here is calling for an rix file so this will need to be a new data table. And we could right-click it in New. In fact, well, let's do this one this way because we've done all the others the other way. So it fills in file 11 because that is the next one available. Now we're going to go down here. We're going to find the routing, extended routing information. That's what we're going to call this one. And we're going to click OK. And so now we can go here and we can get bar I X then we need 11 colon zero. That'll be the first element in it. And then these class instances attributes, those are actually in uh, the PowerFlex manual. We're mainly, we're going to start by going at seven and we're going to go at five and we're going to go at four. And actually that was a really bad habit I just showed you. Um, it, it did work for this one, but let's go ahead and talk about the pitfall of this. Is Notice this side says hex. This size says decimal, and this has to do with which numbering system you're using. So if I put a value of 10 here in decimal, that's an A in hex. So make sure you know which one you're actually working in. Uh, the documentation on the PowerFlex is in decimal, so the 5 should have been entered right there. All right, now let's go ahead and download that. And if you need any help downloading your program, or if I went too fast or any of that, or you're just wondering, hey, I can't... Oh, I got, I got a learning opportunity. There you go. We have a learning opportunity. So let's go back and see what I did wrong. Is it showed an error. I'm going to hit the verify button up here. And we're going to open that up. And it's, oh, yeah, I did. I um, I totally botched that. I forgot. Well, one, I forgot to get him a multi-hop tab. The two address is 192.168. And if you're using our default trainer, it is 1.12. Mine is at 20.12. And we're going to hit the pair of buy button again. That's paper with the old looking computer. And we still do have an error. So it's offering not entered. What did I not enter? I forgot the service code. Because I forgot to right here. This is not a custom service code. This is a get attribute single because we're going to get something and that's going to fill an E there in. That does blank these out, but that gives me a chance to do it the right time this time. It should be over in the decimal side, seven, five, four. And now we'll hit the verify button. No errors found. And this time we'll go ahead and download it and see what that does. And as I was saying before, yeah, if you um, need any help downloading your programs or the basic instructions or you're looking for, hey, how did we even configure this to run? Check out the description. There is a course on all of us. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We put out at least one how-to a week, usually two. And we can see in here now that we are getting data. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up in sub and zero. And we're going to go back to the data file. And we know that data should be coming in on sub. And we see we have a 998. And if you notice on our drive, we have a 998. So now, if I bring this down to 5 volt, this is dropped to 4.98 or 49.8. And if we look over here, we have 498. So now we're able to pass this point of data through. 
Now, let's say we wanted to get the voltage of our drive. We're going to go ahead and go offline here. And let me show you where you can find this info. And this is access level everyone from Rockwell. So I'm allowed to show it. But we have PowerFlex using data links for the MicroLogix 1100, 1400, SLC, and PLC5. It's QA29300. And right here is what we're really looking at. And we had it at a value of five in our instance. That's data link one, sevens two, nines three. And we already have voltage on the fourth one. Whoop, Rock was a typo there. This is the fourth one at 11. Notice they had two threes. 11 is the fourth data link that we have our DC bus voltage at. So we're going to just go over here and we could add another one, but just I'm going to change the one we have on the 11. On the decimal side, here's a good example. 11 in decimal is a B. If I put 11 over here, I'm getting a 17. So we have to know what it's in, and that document is in decimal. And then we'll go ahead and download that. And now, if we look at N7, we have 344, and that is the DC bus fault. Now, I've kind of enjoyed brushing up a little bit on the MicroLogix, and I was really shocked. I managed to integrate this I.O. link from Chirp into a MicroLogix PLC. So I've created this playlist right here with that video and several others. See you over there.